Racing MB2 when they're not fighting it out for world championships, and so can you. MB2 Raceway, located between San Fernando and Santa Cruz Valleys, where the 5, the 210, and the 14 freeways meet in Silmar. It's MB2 Raceway. Dial 1-866-986-RACE. That's 1-866-986-RACE. MB2 Raceway, where racers race. Here at Story with your hometown station weather. Mostly sunny today with highs in the upper 70s. Overnight lows in the mid-50s. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, including the latest on COVID-19 here in the Santa Clarita area, go to hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. I am your host, Matt Watson. It's good to have you in. Are you watching via Facebook Live? If you enjoy listening on Facebook rather than on the radio or on your Amazon Alexa app or on the, uh, the app that you can download free on your Android or iPhone device. If you'd rather tune in on Facebook, you can see us. You can look in here on the studio. And before you post the question, I'm wearing a mask because I'm sitting across from Engineer Shane, not because I enjoy wearing a mask while I'm sitting in a room by myself. He is off camera, but I know what you're thinking as you look in from Facebook Live. Why is that fool wearing a mask when he's sitting by himself? Because I'm not by myself. There's his fingers. Good morning, Engineer Shane. Good morning. This special edition of Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers is brought to you by KHTS in collaboration with SCBI and iLead Schools. We come to you live each day at 9 a.m. providing support and updates for you on your distance learning journey. We've also got uh, a website that we continue to curate and add resources to every single day. Have you been over to homeschoolinganswers.com? It is homeschoolinganswers.com. We've got all different kinds of curriculum and activities and fun different things that, uh, that your kids can do to help keep them engaged, help keep them learning and growing. You can go in and search for things for your kids by grade level, by subject area. We've also got uh, parenting tips and uh, almost full parenting courses. There's a lot of things in there for parents. You know, I was just talking to my first guest off the air, and, uh, you know, it can be tough when you're at home all day, all night with the kids. So you may want to pop into homeschoolinganswers.com, take a look at the resources for parents we've got there, help you all keep your sanity and Maintain the peace there at home. Go ahead and check us out. And, uh, you know, if, if you're looking for something in particular and you're not finding it, or if you're not sure what you need, but you're certainly not finding it there, shoot us an email at homeschoolinganswers at ileadschools.org. Again, that is homeschoolinganswers at ileadschools.org for the email, homeschoolinganswers.com for the website. Checking in on our national holidays, you know I love to celebrate. Today is National Be a Millionaire Day. Who wants to celebrate with me? Right on. Yeah, I'll be picking up my Powerball ticket on my way home to celebrate National Be a Millionaire Day because, you know, I'm always one to celebrate. It is also National Quiche Lorraine Day. So, Lorraine, just sit there, be quiet, and eat your quiche. All righty. We've got a great show today. We've got a lot of curriculum going on today. Dustin Langning's here. He'll be, uh, he'll be joining us in just a minute. He is on the line right now. We'll get him in, in here in just a second. He is an eighth grade facilitator at SCVI. And if you know anything about SCVI, you know the kind of great projects that Dustin and his team are known for. Well, Rona has thrown down the gauntlet now. And so we're going to check in with Dustin to see what kind of game he's got when it comes to distance learning and, and project-based learning with his kids. We'll also have Aiden Bybee from Eilid Agua Dulce during the second hour. She's going to be talking about that other PBL play-based learning. Aiden's been in a couple times before. Do you, do you remember her? Like I said, she's doing some great things with play-based learning in the outdoor classroom, and uh, we'll see how her program's doing after nine weeks of distance learning. And of course, we're going to wrap up hour number two with our show's official licensed marriage and family therapist, Christina Debray. She'll be joining us at the end of that second hour, so let's do this. Let's get started. My first guest today is Dustin Langning. Dustin is one of the most passionate, energetic, and innovative educators that I've ever met. He's known for the incredible connections he makes with even the most challenging of students. He earned his bachelor's degree in psychology with a double minor. Check it out. 
double minor in sociology and history from Chapman University. He holds a multiple subject teaching credential, earning the recognition of Credential Student of the Year in 2009, graduating with honors, of course. He's currently working towards his master's degree in curriculum and instruction. He's one of those teachers that kids look forward to before they get into his class and then remember fondly long afterwards. Dustin is a founding member of the project-based learning team at SCDI and iLead Schools that helps expand the iLead vision to each of our campuses across the country. He and his teaching partners, uh, who, uh, or he and his teaching partner were co-recipients of the 2017 SCDI Founders Vision Award. And in the words of one of their learners' parents, Dustin is one of those teachers that has it all. Connection to his kids, passion to teach, and is respected by students and colleagues alike. My kids, that's uh, his parents' kids, have been fortunate to have Dustin for several years, and, and she's just one of the hundreds of parents that would say the same thing. Dustin, welcome to the show. Good to have you. Thanks. Thanks a bunch for having me, and thanks for that awesome intro. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have you at all my events. There we go. I'll, I'll bring the snare drum, and I'll just walk three steps ahead of you, and, uh, and I'll welcome you in wherever we go. Ooh, all righty. Awesome. <laughs> Dustin, you know, before we get started with all my guests, I, I, uh, I do the same thing, and, and I Google them before the show because and, and, I don't want to miss anything in that intro. Um, but when I Googled you, you know what the top two hits were? First of all, mm -hmm. as always, you know, you get the images, and there was an image of you and I in Texas getting project-based learning training. But the number one, the top informational hit, do you know what it is? It's your yeah. IMDb. Oh. That's right. Your supporting role as murderer and bank robber in Calling the Shots has achieved maximum search engine optimization. Old Griffin is oh. making everybody famous. Oh, I, mean, I appreciate that, Griffin. <laughs> I knew that that 12 minutes was really going to really boost my career <laughs> you know we had griffin in here last week he's, he's an amazing young man for those of you that yeah. missed griffin griffin is a 16 year old filmmaker just turned 16 years old he's about to release his third feature length film and and dustin did play a, a pretty strong supporting role in his first film a couple <laughs> years back so yeah i wish i could do more with griffin he's amazing he's an amazing director a young kid just in general he's just a great human being if you ever get a chance to talk with him five minutes in and you'll know everything about him so oh yeah yeah, yeah. He, he is phenomenal unfortunately for folks like you and i he's 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 moved well beyond uh asking his classmates and his his facilitators to to co-star in his films that he's he's really up in the up in the bar dustin let's get into project-based learning this morning you teach eighth grade and and we want to talk to you about some of the projects that your learners have been working on before we get to the specifics, can you talk to us a little bit about project-based learning? For, for our listeners that don't know exactly what it looks like, maybe they, they haven't had a learner enrolled at SCBI or, or one of our other like ILEAD schools, what is PBL? What is project-based learning, and, and what's it look like in the classroom? Wow, you're starting off with big stuff. That's a big, loaded question. Um, project-based learning is such a multifaceted um, model. It's something that you could spend just like I have done, you know, over a decade studying and still feel like you don't know everything about it. Every time I sit into a training, um, I always go, man, am I doing this right? Am I doing this the right way? Um, simply put, project-based learning is a teaching method uh, in which learners learn by actively engaging in real world and personally meaningful projects. Um, they gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time, either by themselves or ideally collaboratively with one another. Um, I've seen projects that have lasted um, upward, you know, a week, week and a half that have been done really, really well, surprisingly. And I've seen projects that have lasted an entire semester. There's a lot of factors that go into that. You know, it depends on, you know, your scope and sequence. It could be your, your depth of the project that you're looking to get into that year. Um, but the goal of any project um, is to investigate and respond to authentic, engaging, and complex questions. Uh, we, we tend to call those driving questions um, in the business. And if you ask, you know, certain experts like Tom Markham, which I'm sure you've had him on the show, um, it does need to be a problem. It needs to be a problem that they're solving, something that's going to engage them and sustain them over the entire course of the project. So for me, that's PBL in a nutshell. Okay, so yeah, the idea is you, you throw this great big huge question at your, your learners, and, and the question doesn't necessarily inspire answers. It inspires more questions, more investigation. The idea is we want to get our kids excited about what we're asking them, and and solving those, like you said, authentic, real world problems. When uh, when it's best done, the kids are working on something that actually has has meaning to them. I remember 
I remember, you know, we'd get toward this time of year, you know, we're late May, getting close to June, and the school year would end, and, and I used to look forward to just opening up my notebooks and, and dumping all the work into the garbage t- can right in front of, uh, <laughs> you know, right in front of the classroom so that my teacher could see how meaningless everything that, that he or she had me do at the end of the year. And, and, and you know, first of all, project-based learning, typically you don't have those notebooks filled with worksheets and things like that. Y- you leave the classroom with those experiences, with the uh, right. things that have, uh, have changed you. So uh, I, d- I think it's kind of obvious uh, if people are, uh, are listening closely, but why don't you go ahead and state the obvious for us. Uh, what are some of the benefits of project-based learning? Because for you as the, the educator, isn't it just easier to, to teach each subject in isolation? Like, you know, have the kids, you, your specialty is science, you know, have the kids memorize the periodic table of elements or, uh, you know, uh, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And, you know, they repeat that 12 times mm-hmm. and then go home. So what are the benefits of PDL? Well, the benefits in terms of that are hopefully holding on to that information a lot longer and being able to actually tap into that information a lot later on. You know, when we do the periodic table, I don't really have them memorize really anything on the periodic table because they can Google that at any time. What's the atomic number of nitrogen? Say seven. Okay, well, what does that actually mean, you know, to them? So when they actually look at this, they can go, okay, that particular number means something to the periodic table. And not only does it mean something to that particular element, but it can also mean a lot of other things for a lot of other elements that that element tends to bond with. Um, So when we're talking about chemical bonding, um, there's a lot more greater implications than just memorizing the particular table. You know, yeah, there is some, you know, down and dirty work you got to do in science, just like in math and just like in, you know, particular syntax structures in English, you know, you do have to, there are some things that are, you have to memorize. Um, But for the most part, you really want to get the kids to realize, like, how am I going to be able to use this? And even if I'm not going to be able to use this one particular thing, how am I going to be able to find those particular answers? And so the benefits of PBL are, are huge. It's in those experiences that you create. It's in those, being able to find those connections to things that learners normally wouldn't see. You know, and and with our projects, you know, I teach science and my co-teacher, he teaches history. And we're the only ones I've ever seen that have any type of co-teaching where it's history and science. And we always try to make these connections between the two. And that's like our main part of our job. So the kids go, whoa, it's like those things that make you go, hmm, we pose (laughs) these big questions, you know, and we do so because we want to see those kids go, hmm, weird. And they kind of like lift their head and their shoulders come back a little bit and they go, well, I don't know. I, I'm not sure yet. Well, well, ooh, that's kind of intriguing. You know, we, we talked about that on the project-based learning team. It's those things that make you go, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you, go, mm-hmm. you always want to get those things with PBL because that's where, like, you all of a sudden you know you have that kid. And once you have that kid and you're like, ooh, okay, that's that benefit of PBL because now they have that, like, automatic, intrinsic buy-in where you have them interested. You have them sparked. And then you just keep that going. And you go, okay, this kid's not quite sparked yet. Let me morph it a little bit for him. Okay, this kid, oh, he's totally in. Let me push him a little bit further. Oh, this kid, he's struggling a little bit here. He's interested, but he's timid. Let me see what I can do. So that's kind of cool about PBL is that you can kind of spark that interest and that that experience within each kid. You know, it's interesting. It's uh, You and I have been working on PBL together for the better part of a decade now, and, and that's the first time I, I really kind of grasped it that way is – yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into front-loading it for, for us as educators, right? There's a tremendous amount of planning and, and forethought. Oh, yeah. But then once the project gets launched, uh, it kind of frees us up as, as the kids are the ones that, uh, that end up working the hardest. And, and it kind of sure. frees us up to really, uh, I guess, uh, individualize, right? As to where mm-hmm. if I'm teaching those, those regular lessons where maybe I've got a small group at my desk and I'm, I'm working with kids and, and, and that kind of thing is, is important, working – uh, one-on-one or four-on-one with kids, but oftentimes if my entire day is that way, I don't have time to step right in with a kid who needs to be pushed a little bit further or needs the, the curriculum customized a, a, a little bit differently. But with, with project-based mm-hmm. learning, as the kids are getting their hands dirty, you, you just kind of – and I've seen you do it. I've seen you do it in your classroom. You, you're just wandering around almost just poking kids in, in different directions. It's, it's really interesting. So to, to help crystallize it for our listeners, uh, give them an – an idea of what we're talking about. Let's talk about what it looks like in your classroom. What are some of the projects that you've developed over the years? What are maybe, I know you've done a ton, but what are some of your favorite? I know you've got several that you've done just about every year or, or, or every other year. What are some of the, 
the projects uh, that you develop in your classroom so that our listeners can get a, an idea of what this looks like? Um, so for us, we, we have usually four main big projects that we do throughout each year. Um, and they look a little bit different. Usually they have some of the same big umbrella themes because we really like the themes. The themes are big for us because I feel like with the themes, um, you can really kind of open yourself up to different subjects and different things. Because every year we do a project, we look back on it and we go, is there a way we could do that better? Is there a way we could do that bigger? Can we get more kids involved? Can we get more kids interested? Man, this kid really took off with this. What was the formula for that kid where we can make this happen with every single kid? And the first project that we do at the beginning of the year, the kids are really motivated. You know, they come in and they go, okay, what are we doing? Who are these teachers? What is this really this project-based learning all about? Because even when they've had it, let's say they've been at the school maybe even since kindergarten, they think they know what project-based learning is. But every grade, every teacher brings their own little spin to it. And even though they've had the same training, every teacher kind of has their own little formula mm -hmm. for what that looks like. And for us, we start off with identity. Identity is huge for us because we, looking at that theme, not only that, it's our project, um, but we're looking at who we are. And it's always a great topic for eighth graders because they struggle sometimes to find that identity. Sometimes they go, no, this is who I am. Oh, wait, I change a little bit. <laughs> and what are those changing factors? So we look at that through the lens of every single subject that we teach. We look at that through science, and we look at that through chemistry, we look at that through history, and we look at that at the forming of our country and the Declaration of Independence. We look at that through English and poetry and our uh, Get Lit Slam poetry kind of introduction for these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and we even do it in math. We look at our mathematical identity. Because at this age, you know, a lot of learners go, I'm not a math person. Um, I've never been good at math. Math's always been hard. Or, oh, yeah, I've always been that math guy. Well, let's see if we can prove mathematically if you are a math person or not. <laughs> and so we really have a lot of fun with that um, piece of the project um, because it, it is probably our only project that actually gets every single subject involved. We get PE involved. We get art involved. We get uh, if they're in Spanish or Mandarin, if they're in guitar class. You know, we get every single subject involved, and it's really, really cool because um, it is truly interdisciplinary, that, that one particular start. Well, and I love the identity project. You know, I, I mentioned before, I often lead tours of our, our different schools. And when I walk people through your classroom, I, I, I remind them that, uh, you know, you guys have figured out what every eighth grade teacher has figured out. Y you can't teach eighth graders because they're too busy trying to figure out who they are. And so you guys just <laughs> put that on the table the very first day. You put it out there. You let the kids figure out what their identity is I in all different facets. And then, and then you get it off the table and you move on. A and we're going to do the same thing. We do have to take a quick commercial break, Dustin, but I want to hear more about some of the other exciting projects that you're doing in your classroom. Uh, like I said, we're going to take that quick commercial break. We will be back right after this, so stick around. We're talking with Dustin Langning, project-based learning facilitator of eighth grade at SCDI. You are listening to SCDI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. There's a very good reason Embrace Your Smile has been voted Santa Clarita's number one orthodontist for 10 years in a row. Honestly, it's our team. Dr. Megan LaCornia. I think for me, what makes it stand out is when I have patients that come up to me and say, we have never been in a doctor's office that feels like this. Our team is a family, and we really get along, and we are really passionate about what we do, helping our patients get the smiles they want and deserve. Dr. Megan LaCorn, you have Embrace Your Smile Orthodontics. Embrace your smile. EmbraceYourSmile.com. Hi, this is Bob Sheritz with The Way Out Recovery SCV, reminding you that during these unprecedented times, addiction and mental health do not take a break. If you or someone you love are struggling, please give us a call at 661-296-4444. We are open and here to help you during this time. Thanks. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. We salute our veterans who sacrificed for our freedom. Santa Clarita veteran, Bill Reynolds. Each week, we share an inspirational story of a local veteran on our Hometown Heroes page at hometownstation.com. Thanks to our good friends at Eternal Valley. I'm Richard Nunnally, General Manager of Eternal Valley Memorial Park and Mortuary. We believe taking care of each other is what community is all about. We're proud to bring you the stories of our hometown heroes. Eternal Valley. Life well celebrated. 
Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker has been ranked the 15th most influential person in the entire Santa Clarita Valley in 2010 by the Santa Clarita Valley Business Journal. When everything is on the line, call the Hacker Law Group. Greetings, Santa Clarita. Hey, this is Bill Reynolds, president of our Veterans Memorial Committee here in SEV. This is a public service announcement to let you all know that, unfortunately, we have to cancel our standard Memorial Day ceremony, which was held every year at Eternal Valley. Crowd gatherings are not allowed per the COVID-19 virus. Therefore, we will conduct an abbreviated ceremony that will be aired on KHTS Hometown Station at 10 a.m., Thank you. Your building sign is essential to getting customers to your location. Feathers can help you get your business noticed. Feathers, now in a new larger space with plenty of parking. They walk you through each phase of your project with special attention to detail and quality. Feathers will provide you with a sign that you can be proud of. Your sign will draw customers in instead of having them drive by. Visit Feathers online at feathersigns.com or go to Feathers' brand new bigger location at 26017 Huntington Drive off Rye Canyon or call 298-9442. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers with Matt Watson. That's me. And we're talking this morning with eighth grade facilitator at SCBI, Dustin Langning. Dustin is, a, is an incredibly powerful facilitator, uh, especially with our, our, our landmark curriculum, which is project-based learning. Before the break, we were talking with Dustin about that project that, that they like to start the first uh, – that, that they like to start the beginning of the year with in, in eighth grade where kids are trying to figure out who they are and what they're all about and, and they explore exactly that with them as they go through every subject area of their curriculum, English, math, science, social studies, everything, and, and talk about uh, identity. Dustin, what are some of the other projects that you guys work on? You, 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 your kids figure out their identity and then they move into to what other projects? Uh, so the next one that they work on is um, usually under the theme of revolution or this theme of like change um, where we start figuring out like with us, like once all this news started coming out about Mars, uh, we're going to Mars, NASA's going to Mars, Elon Musk wants to colonize Mars. And that, that was like the big buzz uh, last year. So we go, hmm, I wonder if we can like take advantage of that. Well, at the same time, Kathleen Burdett, and uh, Farnas Kaufman came and said, hey, we got this thing going on with Science Accelerator where learners are going to be basically pitching ideas for inventions or innovations to use on Mars um, because we can't carry everything there. So we have to start thinking a little more innovatively about how do we get things there? Well, if they're going to be maybe 3D printed or if we can use things that we already are going to be using in multitude of different ways. And so, and then also, by the way, we're going to be doing this in collaboration with um, one of the schools in Israel. And I'm like, dude, like this is really, really cool. And at the end, they're going to have to present their ideas to a panel. And on, on that panel is, you know, uh, uh, Jay Cohen from NASA Ames. I'm like, dude, what a perfect opportunity. Once the learners know, like, this thing that you're working on, this project, this pitch, this, this showcase can be seen from someone from NASA and it's going to be seen from experts in the field, they go, whoa, I can be part of something. I can be a part of something bigger than myself. And they usually go, man, this is going to be really, really cool. It's that kind of real-world implication, you know, that we were talking about before. Um, and those best ideas are then showcased, you know, at that later date. And we still have, um, I think right now, we have about three or four groups of eighth graders that are competing with some of the high school groups and working with them, actually, some of them. Um, in order to uh, still present those ideas and moving forward into Space Week. Yeah, I'm so excited cool. that that, uh, that project has been able to continue forward, e even though uh, we've moved to distance learning. In fact, uh, I reached out to, to Kathleen uh, and, and uh, invited her in. She's a little busy, a little busy with Science Accelerator right now, but <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to get her as well as, uh, as one of her colleagues, Amber Soto, in here in, in just a, mm -hmm. a, a week or so. So, so you do the science accelerator, and you do it through the lens of—did I hear you right? Through the uh, the curriculum of of the Revolutionary War. 
We do, and then we, cool. we so what we're studying is we're studying, we start studying the Revolutionary War, um, which is kind of neat, at least on the history side of things. We actually even dabble uh, towards the end into moving into the Declaration of Independence as well and how those all connect. And then learners actually at the end, um, the idea is what is this going to look like moving forward? If we are going to this new place, can we be governed from afar? How did that work with us in England? Did that, really, that. Did, did that work really well? Well, no. Well, then what is that going to look like if we have a colony on Mars and we're here? Are we going to be governed from afar? Um, you know, under even under great circumstances, there is still a huge window for communication. And in the worst case instances, it's, it's even worse. I want to say it's something like, you know, 11 minutes, 18 minutes, something like that. Um, where sometimes that communication window can be broken. So what does that look like? You know, when we have needs and we have our own needs. Mm -hmm. So we actually have learners uh, creating, you know, their own constitutions. Uh, we have learners looking at basically the fall through of what happened with us in Britain. And is that something that can be um, kind of missed here? Is that something that we can avoid uh, moving into a new colony? What a beautiful idea! Where you you, you know you take that. Uh uh, that naysayer notion of why do I want to study things that happened 200, 300 years ago when it has no repercussion on my life now? You just get you get rid of that right away, don't you? Oh, oh, right away. <laughs> that is that is really cool. I never even considered the idea of of connecting the the colonization of Mars and and the colonization of the Americas. That's that's really cool. So, what other projects mm. do you guys work on? Uh, one of our fan favorites, of course, which I, I have to keep going. You know, we have these staple projects and. Sometimes we get known for them, you know, for the better or worse, um, and is the aeronautics project. That's one of my personal favorites because, you know, personally, I just I fell in love with aircraft. I fell in love with the, the physics behind motion. I fell in love with airplanes. Um, why these airplanes can do what they do. Uh, why can they defy, you know, these particular laws that, you know, we've set into place. And um, they have to learn. All the learners, by the way, when they, when they get in and we say, okay, we're starting this aeronautics project. And I tell them, I said, it is going to be difficult. It is going to be hard. Um, and I, I set them up with that tone early on and because I want them to realize, like, if you want this opportunity, you have to work for it. Um, and so they learn all of the elements of flight, not only, like, all the parts and instruments and even certain things that, you know, most of us wouldn't know what they do, but everything from the simple physics of flight, you know, the four forces of flight, right, what makes us lift, what makes us sink, you know, what makes us, you know, be held back and what make, what progresses us moving forward, but all the way to, like, more complicated ideas of, like, that even some veteran pilots don't know, you know, topics of adverse yaw or fluid dynamics or – and then we actually test that knowledge at the end of the unit by flying actual aircraft with certified pilots out of Lano. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Lano, you guys got to make your way out there to uh, the Soaring Academy. It's a small city east of Palmdale. I uh, won't take you too long to get out there, and if you want one of the coolest rides of your life, go get into a sailplane, a glider out there. Um, you will forever have your life changed. Even – I don't care what the fear is, if you're scared of heights, if you're scared of a, whatever. It is the coolest experience that you'll ever have. Absolutely. What Dustin's talking about is the little town of Lano. It's actually right off of Pear Blossom Highway, uh, yep. just there east of, of Palmdale, and they've got a glider port there. It's it, They're these – um, rather large but only two-seater airplanes that don't have an engine. Mm -hmm. And they'll tow you up a mile high, and they'll let you go. And then uh, you're, you're gliding around using the different uh, forces uh, of, uh, of updrafts and, and things like that. Both Dustin and I, and I have done it. It's an amazing experience. It is really cool. So your kids end this project by actually piloting one of those gliders, of course, with a licensed pilot right behind them, right? Right, of course. Yeah, we have a licensed pilot, and I tell them, like, you need to know this stuff because you're going to be the pilot. When they get up there and they get off tow because they get towed up into the air by another aircraft, yep. um, the, the pilot is going to ask you, like, okay, it's your plane. Do you want to take over? And you need to say yes because you have learned all of this information. You have taken it all in. Now is your time to apply it. You've spent hours studying info. You've spent hours on the simulator. You have spent a lot of time figuring all this out and what this is going to look like for you. Take that experience by the horns and make it what you want. And so it's really, really cool. The kids get down. I have never seen a kid come down with a frown on their face. Um, <laughs> they come down, and I love it when the kids go, okay, 
So when can I do that again? Where do I sign up to be a pilot? So I'm coming again next week. Um, does that work for you, Mr. L? You know, those kind of things because I love the fact, the fact that we have created pilots out of this particular program because and it, and it has changed lives. You know, we live in this aeronautic mecca here in Southern California. Yeah. I can name a dozen companies just right off the top of my head that deal with aircraft, either making them, you know, producing them, um, you know, making parts for them that work with them, you know, pilots, whatever. And nobody knows about it. No place in education, no school out here anywhere in the state of California, even I'm going to say, you know, really focuses on this idea of flight and we live in the best place in the world for it. Yeah. So I figured like, let's take advantage, you know? Absolutely. And there's, there's, we're already getting to a, a period of time where uh, those and I call them kids, those kids that came out of the Vietnam War era and became our, our airline pilots, they're all starting to retire now. And, and there's this yep. huge dearth, this huge vacancy in aeronautics that, that needs to be filled. You mentioned that you guys are changing lives with this project. You, you guys have had, gosh, probably a dozen or so kids that have left your classroom and got on to, to get their, their pilot's license, haven't they? Yeah, correct. And, like, even then, like, we even have kids that come back and go, hey, so, like, Remember when Red Jensen came in? He's, uh, you know, he was this really cool um, fab lab guy over from NASA Armstrong, and he came out just to talk with the kids about kind of how, what his job is. And his job is, you know, building aircraft that, you know, the that the uh, the guys tell him to build. The engineers say, "Hey, build this thing," and he says, "Okay." And then he goes and screws around and screws around with it. He flies them around, sees if they're feasible or not for flight. And he came out, and we had two or three kids that were like, "I'm in. Like, how do I do this?" And so now they're at you know, schools actually studying, you know, what it like, what it's like to be an aeronautical engineer and, and looking at, you know, not only we have some kids looking at just the physics of flight and they want to be like aerodynamicists, but also kids that want to like turn wrenches. And, you know, that was my goal too, is when I have, you know, experts come out into the field, it's not just have pilots, you know, but have guys that come out that are engineers and guys that come out that just fly drones and, you know, female pilots that come out and, mm -hmm. you know, people that are at least going to give them a broad exposure. Cause yes, I do all want them to fly, but at the same time, I realize too that not all of them are going to be pilots. Mm -hmm. But let me expose you to things, at least in that field, that are really cool careers that you can also find, you know, whether whatever that looks like for you. Yeah, and it broadens their understanding of the world. So you talked about the identity project where kids uh, discover the identity of, of all different uh, subject areas as well as their own identity. You talked about marrying uh, revolutionary ideas and colonization from uh, the foundations of our country to now the foundations of colonization on new planets. You talked about the glider project where kids are learning the principles of aerodynamics and, and, and aeronautics and actually learning to fly. And that, we still haven't gotten to the one project that everybody looks forward to coming into eighth grade. So can you tell us about the Civil War project? Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, no, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's definitely a learner, family, school, uh, Mr. F's favorite. He's my yeah, teaching partner. Yeah. Um, it's definitely their favorites. You know, when they come in, you know, oftentimes the kids ask a few questions. And one of the main questions they ask is, you know, when are we starting Glider? And the other main one is, so when do we start the Civil War? Because they come in and they see the signs on the wall. They see the rifles, fake muskets on the wall. They see, you know, all these kind of things um, about the Civil War. And they go, man, I loved when I went as a fourth grader, fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh grader, eighth grader. Because uh, we have kids now that have come that are that were in first grade mm -hmm. that are now like I've seen it every single year. When is my turn? And by Ooh, it, you're talking about the the living history day that you and your eighth grade learners put on every single year that our entire school attends. Yeah, so we we have the Civil War Living History Day, and learners they transport the public back to the 19th century. Um, they put on this entire event themselves. They booth it. They call businesses. They do flyers, brochures. They stage it. They create all the props, and of course, they have to learn all the material along the way, you know, if they're going to become experts in their respected fields. So, yes, the respected fields, because once we tell them kind of everything about led up to the Civil War, all the implications of the Civil War, all the states and how the split happened and what the main reason was, which we all know the main reason for the Civil War. Um, but if we start from there, we start realizing, okay, these states are starting to diverge. Where do you now find an interest? And we now open it up at that point in the Civil War for them to go, because the Civil War is such a broad topic. I mean, there's been, there's people that have studied the Civil War for, you know, a ton of time. There's college courses where you can take just on the Civil War itself. And, you know, we're not, uh, 
you know, we're not saying that we're going to cover everything. So we allow them to kind of figure out, okay, what is your interest in this? So we have, you know, time period dances and cotillions. We have battles, kids that are interested in being soldiers, um, people that are looking at the young ladies that are looking at, you know, tea parties and etiquette demonstrations. We have mock trials. Um, some of our kids are really interested in, you know, the judicial process of the time. Uh, we have time period store, uh, which is called a sutlery. It was kind of like a traveling store that for anything that wasn't offered um, by the government, uh, typically for the soldiers, you know, the sutlery would go around and they would sell things, you know, typically like, you know, cards, tobacco, um, maybe combs, you know, anything that maybe they couldn't get that was issued. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have our own sutlery, which is kind of cool. And they sell items there. And that money goes to Rancho Camelos Museum. Uh, Rancho Camelos, if you guys don't know, it's over off the 126. If you guys haven't had an opportunity to go over there, it's right next to Piru. Um, it is a fabulous event. Uh, they do a lot of events throughout the year, a lot of weddings, if you haven't seen. Um, but they are a really cool museum that is actually time period to the Civil War. Um, and to date, we've raised, uh, say, almost $20,000 or so for their nonprofit as an eighth grade collective. Wow, that is fantastic. That is cool. Yeah, I remember you know, just a couple years ago, there was one of the learners that got really excited about photography and, and developed his own photo booth. But uh, he used the same exact process that was used in the 1860s. And and I remember, right. you know, there was somebody interested in medicine, and so he became the old sawbones and was explaining to me, you know, how you get, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bullets out of a leg and uh, and things like that. It, it's really, really interesting. Now, we do want to hear what's going on now mm -hmm. that you've moved to distance learning because, like I said, coronavirus has really upended everybody's everybody's school year, everybody's life right now. And so we want to hear how this this project-based learning thing works from afar. Can you stick around with us for, for one more break, Dustin, or do you have to go to class? No, no good. I'm good until uh, like nine fifty eight. Fantastic. That's typically when we when we break for local and national news. <laughs> so let's take one more quick commercial break and we'll be we will be right back. You're listening to SCDI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. My tile is 20 years old and it makes my house look 20 years old. For quality custom kitchen, bath, and tile, trust the professionals at Southern California Tile. Hi, I'm Bob of Southern California Tile, and I invite you to come look at the wide selection of tile and stone in our showroom. We offer you personalized one-on-one -on -one service and help you see the many beautiful possibilities for improving your home. Get some style at Southern California Tile. In Placerita, by the entrance to Masters College. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. Great healthcare just got easier and more convenient in Canyon Country. Facey Canyon Country is now open directly off the Soledad Canyon exit off the 14 freeway. The 37,000 square foot clinic houses Facey Medical Group primary care physicians, pediatricians, and specialists. Facey has easy 24 seven online appointment scheduling for PCPs and peds. For more information or to make an appointment, visit Facey.com. That's F-A-C-E-Y.com. Consumers Furniture is back open for your business. The safety of our community and our staff, above all, is most important to us. We will provide a safe and clean environment for you to find the perfect piece of furniture for your home. To help you with your purchase, we are offering 25% off your entire order or 24 months same as cash financing. And for our awesome essential workers, we will deliver locally your furniture free of charge. Consumers Furniture is located in the Center Point Shopping Center below Sam's Club and Walmart. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to Eye on the Valley, Homeschooling Answers. We're talking this morning with Dustin Langney. He's an eighth grade facilitator at SCDI. And before the break, we were talking about some of the amazingly powerful projects that he and his teammates develop with, with their learners. They're so exciting. They're so powerful. You know, uh, as the kids move out of eighth grade and on to 10th grade, 
oftentimes they will continue to go, they'll take one of those projects that they went through in eighth grade, and they'll go deeper in their, their personal project in, in tenth grade, which we've talked about on the air uh, in previous weeks. And you'll also hear kids talk at their senior graduation about some of these amazing experiences that they get with with Mr. L and Mr. F and the rest of the eighth grade team there, and uh, it's just a, an amazing experience. But uh, Dustin, you know, on March 16th, we got the call. We shifted to distance learning, and, and we were all wondering what was going to happen to those wonderful projects that you and your, your colleagues are, are known for. So now with distance learning, we're now in week nine. What have you guys been doing? Have you, have you been able to keep project-based learning going? Well, what's kind of crazy is, you know, we as a school, I'm super proud of us in general because, you know, on that Friday, uh, we got that call. It was at the 13th. Yeah, of course, yep. it was Friday the 13th. Sure. <laughs> uh, and we got the call that said, hey, you guys are probably might, might not be coming back for a couple of weeks. So we spent that entire Friday and we go, well, what the heck is this going to look like? Well, we spent all this time and we spent hours and hours and hours and hours of time. And by Monday, we were ready to go with like a full online curriculum. Well, we said, well, it's only going to be a couple weeks, so let's do a bunch of, like, problem-based learning. Let's do a bunch of, like, you know, um, kind of those really cool breakout rooms. Let's do a lot of collaborative little things. But they were all small assignments. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a week went by, two weeks went by, three weeks went by, and the kids started getting, like, over it. They were like, we're tired of this stuff, man. It's just, it's just not what we're used to with you guys. Um, so I asked the kids. I said, well, what do you guys want to do? And you can imagine, like, I took out the online whiteboard and I said, start throwing out some ideas. What do you guys want to do? And you can imagine some of the ideas that started flying, you know, with eighth graders. <laughs> um, but what I noticed, uh, the only consistency was inconsistency. Um, everyone wanted something different. Okay. So I asked them, I said, would you guys fancy, like, a passion project? Um, and they all said yes, like, every single one of them in the thing. I had 45 kids in that particular class, and they all go, yes, simultaneously. And that was on Friday. Uh, a couple weeks into the class, and I said, well, okay. So over that weekend, I spent about 15 to 20 hours, and I came up with all the moving pieces. I had an entry event, a driving question. I filmed like a bunch of flipped classroom videos that they could do on their own time, and I got input from some of our best and brightest. Uh, thanks, Angie. Thank you, Nazi. Thank you, Kat. Um, and we got some really cool stuff out of it. you know. And, and uh, I told the kids, I said, my goal for you is I want you to create a deliverable out of something that you're passionate about in the scientific field. And so I didn't know what was going to happen with this. Because sometimes with project-based learning, if you leave it too far open, um, kids flounder. Yeah. And I was worried about that because I wanted to give them, you know, a, I, I wanted to keep their creativity moving forward, and I wanted to allow them that autonomy. But at the same time, like, when you just say, okay, go, it can sometimes be a disaster. Um, so I was really worried about that. And all of a sudden I said, okay, well, what kind of things can I put in place that will help with that? And so I started putting a bunch of steps and check-ins along the way. And, um, the kids started blowing me away with things that they knew, um, and things that they wanted to study. You know, I kid, one kid that did a, uh, fermentation in food. Oh. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the science of fermentation in food? And she started explaining about the process of converting carbohydrates to alcohol or, uh, organic acids using microorganisms, yeast or bacteria, um, anaerobic condition stuff. And I'm like, dude, this is really cool. Um, you know, and, and so I said, well, what are you going to do with this particular thing? And she had said, well, I want to make kind of like an infographic and a video tutorial for other kids who want to look at the benefits of fermentation and do this particularly like while they're at home. I'm like that would be really, really cool. Cause I told the kids like, you have to have an audience. You have to have something where you're going to create something for people that need it or want it. That's an important um, component of project-based learning is an authentic audience. If you're developing something, you've got to be developing it for someone. So continue. All right. And uh, we had one other learner that wanted to look at the psychology um, of why people do the things that we do. And it was funny, you know, as a psychology major at first, I'm like, oh, that's such a big loaded question. And then she said, well, I'm really interested in – serial killers and i'm like Ooh. oh great oh here we go like this is gonna be, you know man i'm like oh, it's so morbid and dark but also at the same time what it does is it sparks a lot of interest in a lot of people sure so i said well, okay what are you thinking about what are you looking at she's like well so i started looking at all the components that make them who they are and i'll find all these connections and then at the same time i started really getting interested in their last meal i'm like like on death row and they're like yeah and i'm like Okay, so what do you want to do with that? And she's like, well, I want to make a cookbook. 
but it's an informational serial killer cookbook. And so she titled it The Serialistly Cool Cookbook or something. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And so it literally is this cookbook of how to make these things where, you know, John Wayne Gacy, you know, all these people had their final last meals and how to cook those last meals all the while giving you the information on those particular serial killers. So it was really cool. Like, you know, when you give them, when you get out of the way a little bit, I think with project-based learning and you, you kind of, you know, open up the reins a little bit and go, Ooh, cause if I would have said immediately when she said something about serial killers, I was thinking about shutting it down just cause I was like, I'm worried. Yeah. I'm worried about what's going to happen. I'm worried about where this is going to go. What if somebody's offended? What if, and then I go, you know what? She's interested. She's passionate about it. There is a ton of really cool science behind this. Let me just lead her versus selling her now. And when she was finished, she came out with this product that was phenomenal. And when I posted it on my Facebook, I was getting so many things like, oh, I'd love to buy this. And I right. want to, where can I get this? And where can I find this? And so when I told her that, it made her light, light just shine. And she then wrote me this letter and her mom wrote me a letter about, you know, how this project has really changed her experience. You know, she's had all these great projects leading up to this, but this is the one where she felt like she could fly and she could really truly be herself. Yeah, so that and that's really and that's what teenagers do, right? They they go deep, they go dark, right? Uh, and it it can open up a career, whether it's as an author or a criminal psychologist. I guarantee you, this is probably the world's first cookbook with a black cover. Um, <laughs> now, so you mentioned before the the Civil War project. We've only got about another minute or two, Dustin. Uh, have you guys had to just completely scrap the the Civil War project this year, or what are you guys doing Not with it? Normal. Not at all. We've really had to kind of figure out what is this thing going to look like. And we've gone through a bunch of different renditions, but we're still right now actually going through all the information. I'm going through all the innovations and inventions of the Civil War because conflict creates really cool change. And uh, that's one of our driving questions, actually. Uh, how does conflict create change? And with that being said, like the kids have to figure that out, at least on the scientific level. And we're trying to figure out what this end result is going to look like, like whether it's going to be a virtual you know, civil war this year, uh, whether we'll do kind of like a big Zoom civil war piece. Um, it's obviously not going to be the same. And, you know, we're, we're really bummed about it, but we're going to try to make the best of it as we can. Um, we've also talked a lot about the, with the learners about, you know, hey, do they want to come back as ninth graders and do like a really cool kind of collaborative eighth and ninth grade civil war? Huh. So we're really trying to figure out, like, how can we have these kids still have that really cool experience? Very cool. It, it's it's amazing, Dustin. The biggest risk that we've got right now, and, you know, you and I have seen it as we've looked at schools across the country. Uh, kids just aren't engaged right now. And, and that's uh, honestly why we're doing the, the radio show here is to help parents keep their kids engaged, learning and growing. So proud that uh, that you guys and, and the rest of the team at SCBI is able to tap into that, that engagement and, and keep kids not only connected because that psychological connection, uh, social connection, emotional connection is so important for them, but you guys are keeping them engaged academically. Dustin, I know you've got to get to class. Thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you coming in. We appreciate everything that you're doing with your learners. You, you take care. Thanks for having us, man. You too, man. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. It's time for us to check in with local and national news stories and the latest updates right now. But stick around. When we come back, we'll be talking that other PBL, Play-Based Learning, with Aiden Bybee. You're listening to SCBI Charter School's Eye on the Valley with your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHCS. Yes, Duncan is open. The continued stay-at-home orders have been rough on all of us, but Duncan is trying to make things just a little bit better. There are many ways to get your Duncan fix. You can carry out at both locations, or you can drive through at Canyon Country, or get curbside service at the Bouquet Canyon Duncan. Both offer Grubhub and Postmates delivery and are open till 6 p.m. Don't forget, use your Duncan app for On The Go to order, pay, and accumulate points. Duncan cares about the SCV. Set your kids' creativity with a new twist on fun, Painting with a Twist, where professional artists guide your child during each painting party to create a finished work of art they can proudly hang at home or give to a loved one. 
private parties, birthday parties, Friday night tea night, kids camp, daily events all summer. Visit paintingwithatwist.com, Golden Valley in Santa Clarita near Target. Painting with a Twist is your party destination for kids of all ages. With many auto dealers currently closed, Reeves Complete Auto Center is open to handle service and repairs for your vehicle. With a two-year, 24,000-mile parts and labor warranty, Dave Reeves and his team have been exceeding their customers' expectations for decades. Reeves Complete Auto Center is here for you while your dealer is closed. On Soledad and Ruther, ReevesService.com. Reeves Complete Auto Center, caring about Santa Clarita and you. California Credit Union, the only credit union in Santa Clarita focused on our educational community. California Credit Union offers low rates on loans for personal and business services, along with financial services for teachers, students, staff, and families. Free checking and very low new and used auto loan rates. California Credit Union, your personal credit union, located in the River Oak Shopping Center next to Target. Visit us and open an account today. Insured by NCUA, an agency of the federal government. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 10 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. We still have a long way to go. Denise Debrade is Chalk Beach. That from the head of the World Health Organization, repeating what he said a month ago about the coronavirus pandemic. A lot's changed in many places since then, but worldwide, the most new cases of coronavirus reported in a single day has just happened. 106,000 concern growing in poorer countries as richer nations reopen. As of today, every U.S. state is taking steps to reopen, some still more than others. New Jersey is allowing in-person sales at auto dealerships to resume, and Connecticut, Delaware, and Kentucky are allowing retail establishments to reopen with social distancing restrictions. The CDC has released more detailed guidance on reopening schools, businesses, and public transit. The document does not include recommendations for houses of worship. However, a separate CDC report this week recommends faith-based organizations work with local health officials to determine ways to modify activities to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Fox News' Jonathan Sari. New York is now testing grocery and pharmacy workers for COVID-19. Governor Cuomo also announcing findings that in New York City, residents in low-income communities test positive at a higher rate, 27 percent, compared to just under 20 percent of the general population. Florida Senator Marco Rubio says nationwide the question is finding a new normal safely. This is what we're dealing with now is we're trying to lower the risk. Meantime, efforts underway in both the House and Senate to tweak the rules of the Paycheck Protection Program to give small businesses more time and flexibility to use those loans. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi also defending a $3 trillion relief bill passed last week, saying the overriding focus for Democrats is keeping Americans healthy. If you ain't got your health, you ain't got nothing. But the Senate Majority Leader says that bill wasn't a serious effort at winning bipartisan support. America is listening to Fox News. With uncertainty in these times, here's something that is certain. Now, save money on your wireless bill with great customer service when you switch to Pure Talk USA. Now, plans start at 20 bucks a month, depending on how much data you need. All plans have unlimited talk and text. And Pure Talk covers 99% of Americans. They're confident that you're going to love their service. They have a one-month, risk-free, guaranteed 50% off your first month. Just dial pound 250 on your cell. Say the keyword, save now. Pound 250, keyword, save now. How much money would you like to save just by doing something you're already doing? 15 or 25 percent? How about 30 percent? Here in California, all states safe drivers can save 30 percent just by doing something they're already doing. Driving safe. That's right, 30 percent just by driving safe. Allstate can help lower your cost of driving. Safe drivers can save 30 percent or more. Visit Allstate.com or call a local agent for a quote today. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. From bad to worse in parts of Michigan, as residents still under a stay-at-home order are evacuated because of flooding. Two catastrophic dam failures 11 miles apart along the Titabawassee River has forced thousands of people to flee their homes in Midland County, Michigan, where overnight Governor Gretchen Whitmer declared a state of emergency. Downtown Midland should be under approximately nine feet of water. We are also in the process of trying to evacuate uh, Titabawassee Township, Thomas Township, and Saginaw. 
Township. Several shelters and high schools and family centers were opened across the region that's been pounded by days of heavy rain. The governor also urging people in shelters or staying with friends or relatives to wear masks. Jeff Manasso, Fox News. The river's already broken a previous record expected to crest today at some 14 feet above flood stage. For the second time in less than a week, an Air Force fighter jet from Florida to Eglin Air Base crashes during a training mission. In each case, the pilot safely ejected. Both accidents under investigation. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo reacting to claims that the State Department Inspector General Steve Linick was fired in retaliation for investigating him, calling it patently false. Secretary Pompeo told reporters he had no sense of investigations going on inside Linick's office. Couldn't possibly have retaliated for all the things. I've seen the various stories that someone was walking my dog to sell arms to my dry cleaner. I mean, it's all just crazy. It's all, it's all, it's all crazy stuff. Pompeo conceded that he did answer a written question from the Inspector General earlier this year. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Elliot Engel has claimed Linick was probing the Trump administration's effort to sell arms to Saudi Arabia without the approval of Congress. Rachel Sutherland, Fox News. On Wall Street, a rally continues. The Dow's been up over 300 points. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California, K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. Greetings, Santa Clarita. Hey, this is Bill Reynolds, president of our Veterans Memorial Committee here in SCV. This is a public service announcement to let you all know that, unfortunately, we have to cancel our standard Memorial Day ceremony, which was held every year at Eternal Valley. Crowd gatherings are not allowed per the COVID-19 virus. Therefore, we will conduct an abbreviated ceremony that will be aired on KHTS Hometown Station at 10 a.m. Thank you. Lots of people can build websites, but there's one Santa Clarita company that specializes in designing websites for your business, Small Dog Creative. The Small Dog Creative team is made up of local designers who are hands-on. Their talented team of experts builds premium websites and redefine branding. Small Dog Creative doesn't just build websites. They'll upgrade your business's online presence and turn your business into a powerful online brand. Small Dog Creative, Santa Clarita's most innovative web and design company. SmallDogCreative.com. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, The Way Out Recovery SCV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call The Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited, affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. The coronavirus has put us in a position of creating a new normal. Family Law at Home understands their goal is to meet you in the safest place possible. And these days, that might be in your own home in a virtual meeting. Family Law at Home will provide you with immediate advice on your family law matters, such as divorce cases, child custody disputes, and domestic violence. It's as easy as going to FamilyLawAtHome.com. You'll choose your own consultation date and be in immediate contact with one of their esteemed attorneys. Family Law at Home handles the legal aspect while you and your family navigate the new chapter in your lives. Go to FamilyLawAtHome.com. Here at Story with your hometown station weather. Mostly sunny today with highs in the upper 70s. Overnight lows in the mid-50s. For anything and everything Santa Clarita Valley related, including the latest on COVID-19 here in the Santa Clarita area, go to hometownstation.com. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership.
Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson. I am your host of Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers, brought to you by SCDI and ILEAD Charter Schools. My next guest is quickly becoming a rock star in her own, her own arena. She was born in the Antelope Valley. Aiden Bybee attended Paraclete High School in Palmdale. In high school, she showed so much promise as a swimmer that she, uh, she took her talents to Lake Forest College in Illinois, where she graduated in 2017 with a degree in psychology and a heavy focus on child development. And boy, that is really serving her well right now. While in college, she held two internship positions, one at a public school working in social work and one at a Montessori school. She also served her community as a lifeguard. Although she's young, she has already been working with children for 11 years. She joined the ILEAD Agua Dulce team as a, as a care team member, and, and that's uh, uh, kind of what we call our, our support staff. And so a care team member might be someone that, that works on the yard as supervision or in the classroom supporting the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the facilitators um, in any number of, of ways. But Aiden joined the care team at ILEAD Agua Dulce, and Recognizing her talents, our school director, Lisa, quickly promoted her to the, the position of outdoor classroom facilitator. She's also a, uh, a swim coach for the Palmdale Frog Aquatics Club. Love that, the Palmdale Frogs. Thank you for joining us this morning, this morning, Aiden. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So, Aiden, let's, let's talk about what your job normally looks like, what you do at uh, Ily Dogwood Dulce when, when kids are actually there. Um, what does it look like uh, as an outdoor classroom facilitator? What do you do with your kids? Yeah, so um, outdoor classroom is um, an engaging way to take learning outside of um, a standard learning environment, which would be considered like inside of four walls. And we take our children outside to give them um, a sense of self and being out in nature. And we do a lot of hands-on activities out in our outdoor classroom. Very cool. And, and do you do this with all the kids or is it just the younger ones? Um, I primarily work with PK and kindergarten, but I also work with each grade as a specialty class up to um, fifth grade. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing you work with uh, the younger kids, the, the kindergarten, the transitional kindergarten kids every day, and then what, the rest of the classes come through maybe once a week? Yep, exactly. So um, PK and kinder, I work with them um, every day until um, they go home, and then um, I, I work with each grade once a week. Um, to provide them an opportunity to do outdoor classroom as well. Ah, cool. So in the afternoons, because uh, we've got the, the half-day PK and, and kindergarten. So, so what you do outside in the, in the outdoor classroom, how does that support what's going on inside? Yeah, so a lot of the times we, um, especially with our older learners, so when I say older, I mean, I, right now I'm meaning first through fifth grade. Mm -hmm. I try to provide support in what they're doing inside the classroom with their projects. So if um, a, a classroom is doing a project on, um, could be anything, could be mainly, like a, a lot of the times we'll do lo a lot of habitat projects, and um, we'll take that outside and um, focus on habitats and um, provide hands-on activities that learners can do to connect back to their project. I also work on um, implementing standards in with our TK kindergarten students, so um for example, I might do, um, do a lot of, like, they do zoophonics every day, and so I might have um, centers outside where they can practice their zoophonics, but also allow them the opportunity to explore different things in science and art and math. Yeah, it, it always, uh, uh, well, it amazed me the first time I saw it, the, um, uh, the great things that you're doing with, uh, with literacy and, and phonics in the outdoor classroom. And one of the things as a dog lover that I absolutely loved is, you've got a piano out there with the different letters of the alphabet on the piano keys. And, and like I said, I'm a dog lover. And so I, I actually tried banging out cat C A T on the, on the keyboard there. And it just sounded just as sinister as you would think that cat would sound on the piano. <laughs> it, it is great. Uh, so, but now Aiden, like all teachers, like all of our facilitators, your job has shifted to distance learning. So how's your outdoor classroom working now? Um, it's a lot different. We're still trying to provide ways that are hands-on, obviously being um, in a virtual wor world now. Um, it's pretty um, almost backwards. I was 
preaching um, pretty much, you know, we should get our learners away from technology as much as possible, but this is the only way we can stay connected. And um, so what I'm trying to do with my outdoor classroom activities on our Zoom, um, Zoom times is keep them really social and emotional based because our school really heavily focuses on that mm -hmm. um, while also providing um, times where the learners can have hands-on activities versus just me lecturing at them um, through the screen. And I think that's really important um, because we allow our learners to discover on their own. So um, we've been really, I've been really fortunate to be able to still do that through, even through the computer. Yeah, very cool. So I know I've seen you post on social media. You set a schedule every week. What are some of the activities that uh, that you involve your learners in? What are the things that you're scheduling each week? Yeah, so we, um, I sent out a activity list every week. It usually gives a small description of the activity and the materials they need for the activity. I'm trying to keep it um, things you have laying around the house or provide alternatives if you can't find that material. Um, activities pretty much run anywhere between we've done art, we've done science experiments, read alouds. Um, I, I started introducing cooking recently. Mm. I've taken the learners um, on hikes with me. I've, we've done PE classes. We did a cuckoo kangaroo concert. And we've gone on lots of field trips together where we'll um, a lot of the really um, great aquariums and zoos are doing home safari tours. And so we um, will watch those videos together as a group. That is really cool. You know, I've seen the, the, the hikes that you go on. You, you basically just take your phone and, and record when you go on a hike and, and you post it on Facebook Live. I've also seen, and it's really beautiful, I've seen your learners go on hikes with their families and, and they do the same thing. They either tag you on, on Facebook Live or, or they'll upload snippets of the video of them hiking. Aiden, you mentioned, uh, did I get this right, a cuckoo kangaroo concert? Yeah, so cuckoo what is that? kangaroo. <laughs> um, they are two guys that sing some really um, fun songs, and they do movements. So um, most people see them off of Go, Go Noodle. And um, me and the second grade facilitator of school, Miss Rana, love cuckoo kangaroo. We went to their concert, and so um, – We've just been playing videos, and we'll dance with the kids, and our learners love it. So it's a really great opportunity to get our learners in a dance party, really. So is this something that I just didn't understand because my kids are older or because I'm older? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I definitely didn't know about it until I was teaching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool. And then in addition to, to all these amazing activities that you're doing with your kids, you've also been posting, like, challenges and, and, and different experiments and and activities on social media for your learners and uh, parents to work with them on. So what kind of things are you doing there? Yeah, so um, the play challenges are sort of my way to um, get learners outside away from their technology. Um, it's also an opportunity for our learners to um, have some child-led play. Because our Zoom activities, um, you have to use the computer. It's hard to, you know, I sometimes I even can't take my computer outside. And so um, our Zoom activities are trying to bring nature inside or doing a hands-on activity, whereas the play challenges are a way to encourage um, families to go outside, maybe just in their yard, and do some sort of play. And that can be anywhere from um, physical exercise, mud play, water play, going on nature scavenger hunts. And we really want to encourage um, this time to be child-led play because our learners are used to a lot of child-led play in our outdoor classroom. And so we really want them to um, discover and explore on their own versus, like, me telling them what to do or their parents telling them what to do. You know, we've, we've cited the statistic before. Uh, Sir Ken Robinson talks a lot about how um, 97, and I may be off on this, but something like 97% of kindergartners test gifted in the area of creativity. And, and by the time they get to 12th grade in high school, uh, uh, that number is down to about 15%. We oftentimes will teach the creativity out of them by teaching them how to explore, teaching them how to play, right? And, and that's kind of the opposite of what you do. You want to keep that, that creativity open and, and let the kids sort of run the show when they're out there playing around, huh? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important. I mean, I can show them one way, but they can show me probably 10 different ways. Um, for example, I mean, even on our Zoom, our learners are showing me different ways. We were making slime, and I am not a slime expert, <laughs> but these kids were showing me, like, 10 different ways to make your slime fluffy and soft and more cloud. I don't – it was just really cool to see that they were explaining something 
to me and how to do it, and it was really um, cool to watch. That is fantastic. So I, I can imagine you're, you're getting a pretty positive response. What are you hearing from your families? Um, we're getting a lot of great feedback. I mean, learners are really eager to do the outdoor classroom activities and um, the play challenges. Are, I, you know, I pop into all of the other facilitators' Zooms um, um, on, on a daily basis, and um, the, the learners go, what's our challenge for the day? So um, <laughs> the learners are excited, and I've even started posting the – our Zoom activities, I, like, make a, P a PDF handout of, like, what you can do at home. And so um, I put that on PowerSchool for the parents and the learners who um, can't attend the live Zoom so that they can still do those play activities at home. And PowerSchool for our listeners is the um, online platform that we use. So she's posting that there for, for her learners. Now, Aiden, it sounds like a lot of fun, and, and I know the kids are – are really excited and, and engaged, but some of our listeners might be wondering, why do we take so much time away from what could be spent on academic activities, you know, rather than going outside and, and, and playing around in the yard or making slime, our learners could be learning to add and subtract or read. Why are these kind of activities important for kids? Yeah, so this is a, a loaded question, so I'm going to take it in like two different ways. So, All right. um First, like just right off the bat, I think it's providing our learners with um, a small escape from what they're going through right now. I mean, us as adults are feeling stressed. Just imagine how they're feeling, how, what the stress is on a child. And so I think we should really be providing them with um, this sense of familiarity through play and doing things like art and science experiments because that's what they're used to. That's what, how they're going to learn best, and that provides them um, a small outlet from the stress that they're probably feeling right now. Yeah. And then <laughs> I also um, kind of want to challenge um, all of us to change our perspective on play. I don't think play is necessarily taking away from academics. I think play is part of the academics. Um, we all learn best through play. And um, when I mean play, I mean, you know, hands-on activities, learning things through experience rather than someone telling us um, what to do. I mean, Someone could tell me how to change a tire just by reading these instructions, but I'm not going to know how to change a tire until I do it a few times. And those repetitions are going to be a lot smaller when I do it through play versus um, when I'm just reading it. And um, our school actually participated in Play Each Day Week, so we created a whole week where our learning was done primarily through play. So we had um, our first day was design day. Our second day was Dress for a Mess, where you did all messy play. And then Wednesday was Imagination Play. We had learners create their own toys. Um, some kids did stop, stop animation. Um, some learners created their own puppets. Thursday, we had um, Curiosity Day, which was lots of science experiments and um, bug hunts and different things like that. And then on Friday was Find Your Passion. So we had some learners send us um, – songs that they were in and stories that they wrote and comics and it was just a it was an amazing thing to be a part of and to see how our learners um, really showcased how what they are proud of well you know it's interesting as you're talking Aiden I'm, I'm thinking back to to my parents generation you know that generation that grew up in the 50s and 60s when uh, and and that generation kind of reflects on a couple of things that they identify, and I'm doing the air quotes, can you see me on Facebook? They identify as uh, what's gone wrong with our kids these days. And first of all, they identify, and, and rightfully so, that the United States back then used to be on top in, in terms of education. And then the other thing that they identify wrong is, you know, kids don't go out and play anymore. And I'm starting to wonder, hey, maybe that might not be such a coincidence, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So now <laughs> you had kind of a, a little bit of excitement a couple weeks ago. You <laughs> just had a bit of a surprise visitor out there at your outdoor classroom, didn't you? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So um, a couple weeks ago, my director called me up and was like, hey, the news is going to interview for outdoor classroom. And I was kind of like, no, because I don't like to public speak. But um, it was pretty cool. I was like, I was pretty excited. And so um, I go into this Zoom interview with Fox News and um, a few of my learners, and I showed one of our fun Zoom activities, which was making lava lamps. And we talked about what was happening. And during my most academic 
scientific speech ever, I get interrupted, and I was really nervous because I thought I had said something wrong. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> this guy in a blue um, polo was in our Zoom room, and come to find out, he was a helpful Honda guy, and they were recognizing and awarding me with a very thoughtful and beautiful do- donation for our outdoor classroom. That is fantastic. So what kind of things did they donate? Um, they donated. They really went through our I Lead Through Play Facebook page and donated things that I was using for Zoom or things that I used in the classroom. So we have lots of art materials, um, things for science experiments. They donated plants and gardening materials. Um, just like anything you can think of when you think of outdoor classroom, they donated. I, I have so many art supplies now. Um, I got beautiful nature books which are real like the most the mo- I'm most excited about those when we go back to school that is wonderful you know Aiden for someone who doesn't like public speaking you're sure pretty good at it <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> before we wrap up do you have any advice for for parents maybe parents that, that don't attend I lead Hugwood they'll say what advice would you give for families in regards to play to getting outdoors working with their their younger kids Yeah, I think it's important to know that it is going to be a bit of a challenge. Like anyone's going to face challenges when they think child-led play because um, so often we want to hold our child's hand and walk walk them through things. But I think, honestly, you just need to kick your kids out into the backyard with no toys and see what they come up with because, um, you know, our boredom is going to serve our best creativity and in our imagination. You can do things like you can start a garden together or work on some home projects together um, and then teach them things that school really doesn't teach them, like how to change a tire or a light bulb or um, how, to, how to use a frying pan. You know, kids, kids don't learn how to cook really. And so take this opportunity to teach them those types of things. <clears throat> That's fantastic. I never thought about the idea of how our, our boredom serves us. So if we do kick our kids out in the backyard and five minutes later they come back and say we're bored, we don't know what to do, don't be so quick to rescue them. Just leave them out there and, and, and let them figure it out, huh? Yeah, I think, um, you know, so I think especially today in our in our um, world where we want to cure boredom, but I think boredom really is where, you know, our learners are going to find some creativity. They might find, they're going to find something to do so that they're not bored. So I think boredom is good, especially right now. It's okay to be a little bit bored. Because, you know, um, learners can discover and create just from being bored. Oh, that's, that's a really cool idea. Aiden, you're, you're so inspiring. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Thank you for all that you're doing for our kids and, and for their families. Aiden, you take care. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for having me, Matt. Bye. Bye-bye. We're going to take a, a quick commercial break, but do stick around. We will be right back. You're listening to SCDI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley. Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHDS. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. Finding the right lawyer can be a challenge, but in Santa Clarita, there's no need to search when there's Hacker Law Group, Santa Clarita's premier litigation firm. Jeffrey Hacker has represented celebrities, financial institutions, accident victims, and other individuals and companies with their legal challenges. Mr. Hacker has been ranked the 15th most influential person in the entire Santa Clarita Valley in 2010 by the Santa Clarita Valley Business Journal. When everything is on the line, call the Hacker Law Group. At iLead Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Island Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options, too. 
To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit iLeadAguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. iLead Schools. Free to think. Inspired to lead. Santa Clarita Valley residents now have greater access to the excellent physicians and high-quality medical services for which Providence Holy Cross is known. Providence Holy Cross Health Center in Santa Clarita features state-of-the-art cancer and imaging technologies, as well as board-certified physicians in a variety of medical specialties. Quality and compassion from a health care provider you can depend on. For more information, call 1-888-HEALING or visit us at Providence.org. Gotten plumbing, it's Eric. It's Mother. Can you come over right away? It's urgent. I'll be right there, Mom. Okay, I'm here. What's wrong? It's been weeks since you had a haircut, so I want to give you a nice trim. Sit down. Ooh, ow. Gee, I can see myself in the back of your head, son. Mom. Oops. What happened? Uh, never mind, it'll grow back. And so, uh, what's new at Dutton Plumbing, son? Well, with so many people stuck at home, there's a lot of stuff getting stuck in their pipes. So, our $73 drain clearing is really keeping us busy. Wait a minute. I bet the plumber's hair is getting shaggy, too. You tell them that Mom will cut their hair for just 73 bucks. Isn't that a little high for a haircut, Mom? Well, I'll toss in the manscaping for free. Mom! DuttonPlumbing.com Mom's $73 drain clearing at DuttonPlumbing.com Manscaping not included. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station. 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. You're listening to Eye on the Valley Homeschooling Answers. I am your host, Matt Watson. How are you listening to us? Are, are you at home? Are you, are, are you listening on the radio? Are you, are you there? Or do you prefer the FM 98.1 or do you prefer the AM 1220? Or maybe you're Facebook Live in us. You know, if you're on Facebook, head on over to the KHTS radio page. And there we've got our, our salmon colored banner. It's, well, not quite that color. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, we are on Facebook Live, and you can actually peer in uh, at us on the, on the studio. Um, you can also listen in your car on the radio. You know, if you've got an Amazon Echo device, you can listen there as well. I figured this out a few weeks back, you know, and here we go. You ready for it, Shane? We're going to set people's living rooms off. All you have to do is say, Alexa, play KHTS. Is she playing it? Yeah. You know, that's what I do around the house, and that's how I listen when I'm at home. Or, you know, you can download the app. KHTS has an app, a free downloadable app, uh, right there on your Amazon or Android device. You can download that KHTS app. You can listen to us live as well as check out the, uh, the local news, uh, different updates. The, the restaurant row there has got some great discounts for you, especially now if you're looking toward the weekend, maybe what you're going to order out this Friday night. Check out the, r the restaurant row there. There's... All different options for you to listen and get caught up on uh, on local and national news. So, uh, yeah, download that app, and you can listen through your phone if you'd like. You know, we just wrapped up with Aiden Bybee. She's the uh, outdoor classroom facilitator, does a lot of play-based learning uh, there at Ailead Agua Dulce. She's really leading the way, getting some, some local and, and national attention. And she's actually going to be our guest host on our webinar tomorrow. Um, we've talked about it before. I Lead Schools is leading a webinar series. Well, tomorrow is our last in the series. Uh, it's coming up uh, tomorrow, and, and we've hosted them every Thursday the last five or six weeks. Uh, Thursday uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. So Aiden's going to be the guest host, as I said, tomorrow, 1 to 2 p.m. Like I said, I Lead, uh, I Lead Schools is offering that free webinar series. Uh, this week, the topic is play-based education at home with Aiden Bybee. So uh, if you if you enjoyed Aiden's uh, chat with us, our vi her visit with us last break, check her out tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to ask producer Sarah to, to post the link to the registration page. You do need to register, and then once you register, you'll be sent the Zoom link. And now we do post those webinars on our webpage, homeschoolinganswers.com. 
And so currently we've got the different webinars, how to do virtual learning, building virtual partnerships, what does it take to lead remotely, and then doing project-based learning online with our, our, our expert, Tom Markham. Also, uh, student support, that's, that's how we do special education. So special education virtually, the why, the what, and the how. All those are already posted there, and so if you're thinking, well, Matt, I don't know that I can make it tomorrow at, at 1 o'clock, but uh, I'll wait until you guys post that webinar on, on, on the webpage, homeschoolinganswers.com. You can certainly do that, but the benefits of attending live is that we do uh, kind of a, a half an hour presentation and a half an hour Q&A. So, uh, so if you wanted to uh, kind of pick Aiden's brain and, and maybe ask her a few questions, you can participate in that Q&A live by registering on, on the link that we're posting on the Facebook Live page. You know, uh, right now we're, we're heading toward the end of the school year and folks are looking at what graduation's gonna look like or even if you don't have a a learner that's graduating, you're, you're just looking into the summer and then wondering what next year's gonna bring. And oftentimes this is the time of year where, where families start to wonder, hmm, I, am, I, am I happy where I'm at? Do I, do I need to make a change? Uh, maybe I wanna uh, make a move for next year. And, and if that's you, if you're thinking that uh, uh, you, you wanna make a change for next year, you're thinking about one of these iLead schools that we've been talking about, why don't you head on over to one of our websites. Uh, if you're interested in our founding school on the west side of the valley, SCVI is right there off of Newhall Ranch Road. Just go to iLeadSantaClarita.org and there's a lot of information on the website for you to peruse there and you can just click enroll now and, and you can start that enrollment process for next year. If you are more interested in uh, some of the things that Aiden was talking about, although we've got plenty of play-based learning at SCVI, the Eilid Aguadulce campus is just this, it's this huge sprawling campus. If you've never been there, you really owe it to yourself to, uh, to swing by. It, it's a gorgeous campus with so much space, trees for kids to climb around in and all different kinds of space for kids to run and, and, and move around. It's just a beautiful campus. If you're interested in, in, in an Eilid campus on the east side of town, Eilid Aguadulce is there. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Matt, Aguadulce isn't, East Santa Clarita, it's, it's way up the 14th, you know, it is not that far away. I live right in the heart of Saugus, and it blew my mind to realize that I lead Aguadulce is actually closer to me in Saugus than SCVI is on, on the west side of the valley. So it is really right there in our backyard, and, and it's just a beautifully serene setting. So if you're interested in I lead Aguadulce, head on over to iLeadAguadulce.org, or you know, if you're enjoying this distance learning, having your kids around the house a little bit more, or maybe your kid is, is a bit of an introvert who's uh, not really as active in class as, as you'd like, but now that they're online, they're really speaking up and participating in discussions a lot more, or, or, or maybe just the flexibility that the online setting provides your family is, is something that you really have taken to. You know, we've got a fully accredited online school they are WASC accredited. They are, if, if you play sports, high school sports, they are NCAA certified so your kids can continue to play as they, they move into college. Check out iLeadOnline.org. Uh, you know, an online school, we've had the folks from iLeadOnline in recently and the online setting, the fact that you don't have to bring someone in physically to class every day really allows them to offer so much more than a typical school would be able to offer. I remember when I was the high school director out at SCVI, we, uh, we really wanted to offer as much as we could in the way of foreign languages, and, and we struggled to, to bring just two foreign languages to SCVI. And we had Mandarin and, and Spanish, and that's something that's, that's just a reality of a brick and mortar school. Well, I lead online, I think they've got four or five different foreign languages that they offer, and, and they can afford to do that with the, the virtual platform. So go ahead and check out all of our iLead schools. If, if you're interested in seeing what the entire organization is about and where some of our other schools are, you can go to iLeadSchools.org, and, and there you'll find links to all of our schools. So do check it out. Head on over to our website. Click Enroll Now, and, and you can get started. You know, we do have a virtual uh, information uh, meeting this, uh, this Friday. May 22nd at 10 a.m. Um, I'm gonna ask producer Sarah to, uh, to post the link to the upcoming virtual introduction to SCVI. That's 10 a.m. this Friday. You head on over there and, and check it out. That's what we're doing in lieu of, of hosting family nights out at the campus because uh, we're not allowed to get together on the campus right now. So yeah, if you're interested in one of our iLead schools, check us out.
You know, we are living in some very interesting times. Uh, my regular listeners know that I'm a sports guy and um, been watching this whole pandemic through the lens of sports. And every day when I come in before we start the show, Engineer Shane and I, we talk about, you know, what's going on with, with, uh, with sports. Uh, you know, Shane and I, both you, you and I were both kind of kind of gripping a little bit when the governors of some of the larger, more affected states, such as California, New York, just, what was it, a couple weeks ago, they announced, nope, that's it, no, no, no public sports, no, no sports of any kind until at least 2021 is what they were saying, right? Yeah. Things have, uh, things have changed a little bit. Pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, I think it was, what, maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago that, uh, that the governor of Florida said, okay, nobody wants to do sports, come on down here. I, I think they started, uh, I think you, you, you follow it a little bit more closely than I do. Did they start with MMA already in Florida? Uh, I know MMA recently had their, uh, I think it was the UFC, they just recently had their first event back. Now, I can't remember what the location is. M- might have been Florida, but I know um, <laughs> the governor in Florida, kind of a, an entrepreneurial spirit, he, he reached out to the rest of the states and said, Hey, if you can't do your sports there, NBA, if you want to get back, and, and New York and, and California, I know you've got some, some valuable franchises there. Uh, if you can't do it there, come on down to Orlando. We'll host everybody down here. And Arizona, I think, was, was the next one to get on board. I was just about to say, Arizona was right behind them, and they were included in some of the uh, in MLB's original talks to bring their league back. Hey, we'll just make a baseball world bubble, essentially. Bring every team in, keep only the teams and the players in. Nobody else can go in or out in order to sort of isolate themselves. But that one didn't go over too well. No, it didn't. And, you know, all those different ideas uh, just brings up, uh, well, I guess it's kind of the, the macro project-based learning that Dustin was talking about last hour, right? It's, it's this huge question. How can we get back to, to, uh, to professional sports while still ensuring the, the health of everybody involved? Yeah, baseball's thrown out quite a few ideas. Uh, they've been, I think, probably the most vocal of the leagues. It, you, we keep hearing all these different ideas of how we're going to be able to do Major League Baseball. Are we going to do everybody in Arizona? Are we going to do the West in Arizona and the East in Florida? Or they've talked about three divisions now, I think, and thrown out different ideas. And I really liked all the ideas that they've had so far, but kind of going back to what we got into this discussion for, the money as soon as so the conversations must have gotten real with one of these states (laughs) because all of a sudden like you mentioned california new york did a near 180 on their their policy and what they were saying and they immediately were saying oh no we're having sports in fact we welcome them we want them back and richard sherman uh current player in the nfl right now i don't know if you saw a tweet that he put out but richard sherman commented on this and he said uh on twitter it's funny how things or uh, not Not exactly. Don't want to put that out there just to clarify on the radio, but (laughs) essentially to paraphrase, he said as soon as the money starts, money talks, as soon as California and New York started to realize that there was a chance of their seasonings happening or their seasons happening outside of the state, their tunes changed quickly. New York and Los Angeles are huge, huge epicenters for our, our nation's economy. We put out a ton of money. So in addition to the sports revenue leaving those states, I think both governors sort of realized, oh, no, we, we can't lose that. You're absolutely right. And, you know, it's not just the, the greed of billionaires driving this. Um, uh, you're right. New York and California have been the hardest hit during the health crisis. Um, but because of that, the, the shutdowns have had to be a little bit more severe. And, and so, therefore, we've been also the hardest hit in, in terms of our economy. And so when uh, we face the very real notion of some of the biggest portions of our economy being shipped out of state, yeah, the governor's reconsidered, maybe we can do this. And, and let's be honest, at the same time, we're, we're realizing that the curve is flattening and maybe we're on the downside uh, of this. And so, yeah, the governor of New York said right away, he was the first one that said no sports until 2021. And then really quickly, he said, hey, if you want to play sports, play here in New York. And then Governor Newsom just a couple days ago said, hmm, I think June 1st we can we can open the sports back up. So you had a funny point saying that when all this first started, when the pandemic first broke out, it was almost like a competition to see who could shut down the longest, the most, you know, out in the future. <laughs> hey, you know, we're going to have bubbles around every sports arena for 30 years. Yeah, and no, nothing ever. <laughs> and yeah, no, and it, it's quickly changed. So we'll see what happens. Maybe the Dodgers, because of how hard hit L.A. County is, uh, is by the uh, coronavirus, by COVID-19, maybe they move stadiums. Let's say they get out of, you know, L.A. County and they go to an area less impacted because it it causes some problems because they might not have a place to play. But if it comes down to it, if that's what brings it back, I mean, 
wh- what are we going to do? I, I don't know, man. I, and I didn't think this far down the line. I, I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm not going to be rooting for the L.A. Dodgers of Anaheim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, was saying, I, don't know, I, don't know about, I don't know about calling them a different name, but since, okay. since L.A. County may not reopen as quickly as, let's say, the rest of the state or yeah. the rest of the country, mm-hmm. uh, if that's what it takes in order to get the Dodgers back onto the field, hey, maybe you know they take a bus ride, they go share a stadium with – well, I was going to say the athletics, but uh, Oakland and San Francisco right. is a very de- popular er, population dense area. But you know, just finding a different place to play, something. Yeah, a- absolutely. Um, uh, as long as my boys in blue are out there and, and then uh, able to compete for a ring again, I, I I don't care if it's the L.A. Dodgers or the Lake L.A. Dodgers. You know, we can. It'll still be L.A. County. We can send them way out to the desert. Or, gosh, I guess that would still. Uh, maybe be shut down depending on whether or not our, our mayors <laughs> get that variance we talked about yesterday. I, if they're the uh, the Mojave Dodgers, you know, let's just get back to sports. Something, anything. But yeah. that's if, if that is if we do get back. I mean, there is the pay dispute going on between the players and the owners <laughs> right now, which is always a one of the tougher arguments to make. Hey, feel bad for the billionaire owners. Hey, you know, we're g- if we put on the season, we're going to uh, operate at a loss essentially. Mm-hmm. But uh, the players are saying, no, if you want us to take 100% of the risk, we're not going to take 50% of our paycheck to go out there. Right. However, it's a losing position for the players because if they say no, then the owners can look back at them and say, how dare you not inspire the rest of America? <laughs> how dare you not get out there and uplift the country? Because certain media members have already written articles on that. So the players are in a very tough decision. Do they go out there and accept all the risk, have to pay, but inspire America? Or do they get slammed on by the owners and the rest of the people for – you know, not just helping out in a time of need. Yeah, how hard do you push? You know, we've seen that in, in some of our healthcare workers as well. Some of our healthcare workers have felt that they haven't been protected enough, and so they've said, "Look, until we have the protective gear that we need, we're not going back to to uh, the hospitals." In, in some rare cases, obviously, um, uh, but it's a uh, it's a kind of a sobering issue. Yeah, absolutely. It is, and I said uh, I heard a good point. I can't remember where I saw it, but essentially, was saying if I. If I'm essential enough to work in a pandemic, I should be essential enough to make a living wage. Right. Because some of these medical people or some of these grocery store workers aren't even making enough to support their families. So it really brings up some larger issues that we have when it comes to these uh, these pandemics and times of need. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Everything is so complex. It's not just, uh, you know, arguing over over the billions that are available in baseball. There's so many different uh, Different things to it, and it's interesting. I was listening to an interview with UCLA football coach Chip Kelly this morning. You know, he's a he's a smart guy, and, and he said uh, he said, uh, you know, what I do know is that the people that are talking don't know, and the people that know aren't talking. So <laughs> <laughs> kind of complex. So I, I'm just kind of trusting as far as sports go. You know that there's. There's some smart people there, but behind the scenes that aren't saying a whole bunch of anything, but we'll get an announcement here uh, relatively soon. Uh, uh, you know, it's one thing when you shut down my March Madness, but now we're, we're what, six, seven weeks into the, the baseball season. Oh, and too long, too long. I, I, yeah. wear, I wear a baseball hat almost every day when I come in. If it's not baseball, it's the Lakers. The Lakers season got canceled. I was ready for LeBron to get a chip for us here. Oh, man. Yeah. Sports dream. Sports dream. It, it is rough. Alrighty, so this has been Sports Talk on Eye on the Valley KHTS. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we get back, we're going to be helping take care of your uh, social, emotional, and mental needs. We're going to be talking trauma with licensed marriage and family therapist Christina Debray. You're listening to SCDI Charter Schools Eye on the Valley. Homeschooling Answers. I'm Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. Aloha, friends. Go check out Honu Coffee, home of the best cold brew coffee. What makes their coffee special is how their organic coffee beans are infused with nitrogen to create a smooth and delicious cup of coffee. You'll also find traditional bold coffees and island-inspired signature drinks. They're the perfect place to catch up with friends or just relax with your favorite cup of joe. Honu Coffee on Lions and Walnut in Newhall. Stop by and say aloha. And now for your convenience, a second Honu location at 23502 Lyons Avenue between Peachland and Apple. If you're in danger of losing your home to foreclosure, you need an expert. Hi, I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty. I've helped hundreds of Santa Clara residents save their homes completely for free. I've got just over 20 years experience and a loan modification success rate of over 80%. I can negotiate better terms with your bank and I can save your home from foreclosure. And again, we do this completely for free. So if you're in any danger, please call me today at 661-714-1400. That number again is 661-714-1400. I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty. I'll be happy to help you save your home for free. At 
I lead Agua Dulce, we believe the most important thing a child can learn in school is who they are. Life's real tests are never standardized, which is why we've developed an individual-based curriculum that values exploration, cooperation, and creativity. As our learners grow, so do we. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through 7th and adding 8th grade in 2020. Your young learner will be immersed in a unique environment where possibility and self-discovery are at the core of every experience. The Agua Dulce campus features beautiful indoor and outdoor spaces for hands-on inspiration, including a robotics lab, a garden bed, a greenhouse, and a technology-based exploratorium. Eilid Agua Dulce is conveniently located on the east side of the Santa Clarita Valley, just off the 14 freeway. Check out our homeschool options too. To schedule a campus tour or learn more about our programs, visit iLeadAguadulce.org. We're enrolling now. iLead Schools. Free to think, inspired to lead. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Comfort Keepers provides your loved one with loving in-home care. Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers in-home care. Our caregivers can help you in your own home, enhancing independence, creating safety and comfort. Our Comfort Keepers provide companionship, meal preparation, medication reminders, assistance with personal care, and even transportation to doctor's appointments. If someone you love can use a helping hand at home, visit ComfortKeepers.com. Or call 287-4200. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. You know, we continued sports talk into the commercial break there, and we were talking Dodgers baseball with my next guest, Christina DeBray. She's quite the Dodgers fan, and, you know, we're, we're going to move on now, and, and, and we're going to be talking uh, about much more important things with Christina. You know, she's a licensed marriage and family therapist, and she's got an amazing story. I, I, she likes when I talk about uh, how she's taken her bushel of lemona lemons that she was dealt in life, you know. She was told early on in life that she was uh, not going to live very long, and, and what she did, she was going to be quarantined away from the rest of us, socially distanced. And, and, and she uh, early on took those lemons and said, nope, I'm making all kinds of lemon dishes, not just lemonade. I'm, I'm cooking with lemons, and, and boy, is she cooking. She, uh, she ended up attending Cal State Northridge, getting her degree there, getting another degree from Pepperdine University. And now she's a licensed marriage and family therapist with her practice here in Valencia. She's studied all different kinds of things that, that she's gone through herself, uh, trauma and grief and, and, and all these different things that a lot of us are, are dealing with right now. Christina's got a ton of public speaking experience working with medical professionals and different organizations, patients, schools, business professionals. Good morning, Christina. How are you? I'm good. Um, just to specify, I, the thing that I like is that I like uh, the different recipe ideas because <laughs> every time <laughs> you're saying about the lemon, you're talking about the lemon dishes, I'm like, oh, that sounds really good for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite lemon recipe, Christina? Um, I love lemon chicken. Oh, nice. You know, I'm actually going to be cooking some salmon tonight, and, and when I get home, I'm going to let it soak in some lemon juice for a good couple of hours and then throw a little basil on top and barbecue it. So nice. have some lemon up on top of the salmon there. Christina, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, not Cooking with Lemons Month. So, so let's get into <laughs> it. We've been talking about trauma this week, um, and, and I know a lot of us uh, are feeling trauma, and, and oftentimes uh, we talk about feeling traumatized, but... Uh, we're not always certain if we're talking uh, a little bit of, of hyperbole. You know, it, am, I, am I traumatized or am I just bored? Or am I traumatized or is this just what life is now? 
You, you know what I mean? So, so what does trauma look like? How, how can I tell if I'm, I'm truly going through trauma? Well, um, as I mentioned before, trauma can look different for everyone. But I know we talked yesterday about some of the symptoms, and I wanted to elaborate on that today. So w here are a few things that, that can manifest. Um, it's uh, this loss of safety. Um, now, all of a sudden, possibilities that seem distant seem like a reality. Anything can happen. So we're seeing this right now with COVID-19 is, hey, this sounds like something that we saw in a movie, but now it's happening now. And so then it's, oh, wow, what can happen next? And so we have that loss of safety. Um, we also have the loss of danger cues. Um, you lose the ability to discern between um, what is actually dangerous and um, what might be dangerous. So we talked about this before with, you know, if a bear is chasing you, um, obviously that's dangerous, but sometimes people don't know the difference between a bear and an ant. And while that might seem funny, really it, it's, it's the central nervous system. Anything that starts coming, it, it gets interpreted as a bear because of that loss of safety. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen, and so we want to just expect that it's going to be the bear every time, even if 99 times out of 100 it's not, because that's our safest bet. <clears throat> um, we also have loss of trust. There is shame, lots of um, overwhelming and debilitating shame. So this is... Um, true more for the bigger key traumas, but this, you know, like uh, life-threatening traumas, so for example, shootings or sexual assault, people can have shame about the way that uh, things happened, or if they were in fight, flight, and freeze, they have shame about, um, oh, why didn't I run, or why didn't I go help this person? Well, because your stress response is engaged, and you had to do what you had to do to survive. Yeah. Um, Did you sorry, have go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to – you've got about another 30 to 40 seconds. Have you got more? Um, so the last one is, is something called reenactment, and that's when we're trying to resolve an earlier conflict, so we sort of replay out that same conflict hoping for a different one. Um, so it is um, – you know, it's also called projective identification, where we sort of create an um, unconscious self-fulfilling prophecy um, that helps perseverate our worldview because of the trauma we experience. Okay. You know, uh, a lot of us are struggling with trauma during this time, and, and it can be difficult. If you're struggling with trauma or anxiety, depression, if you're not sure what you're struggling with and you just need a little bit of support, Reach out to your health care provider. They are there for you. Our health care providers are stepping up like never before. Uh, but uh, if you're not certain what to do or where to go, call Christina directly. You can call her at 661-513-4857, 661-513-4857, or you can contact her through her website, christinadebray.com. Uh, you know, Christina, uh, show contributor Big T is texting in saying his favorite lemon recipe is limoncello. He likes that Italian liqueur. That is all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to thank our guests, Dustin Langning, Aiden Bybee, incredible educators uh, through iLead, and licensed marriage and family therapist, Christina Debray. You are listening to SCVI Charter School's Eye on the Valley, homeschooling answers. Join us tomorrow and every day at 9 a.m. I am your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. Olive Terrace Bar and Grill is the hottest new Mediterranean fusion restaurant in Santa Clarita with unique delicacies like seafood right off the boat.